and welcome to this week's edition of Roaming Taste Videos. This week we are making New York cheesecake. Now I am super passionate about this recipe because it is one that I've spent several years perfecting and every single time I share a slice with someone they say it is the best cheesecake they have ever eaten. So I do not share this recipe lightly. Um, it is one that I really do stand by. I will also show you, on top of showing you how to make the best cheesecake of your life, I will show you how to prepare your springform cake tin so that you have a real success because I think that part of the process can be quite daunting for people who haven't made this cheesecake before. I also add one ingredient you don't usually see in cheesecakes um, and I think that adds to the lightness. Usually cheesecakes are a little bit heavy. So I would love to know if you give this a go in the comments below or by tag me on Instagram at Roaming Taste. As you can see there is salt in both the crust and the cheesecake. For all other ingredients check the caption. We need to preheat our oven to 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit and then we need to prep our springform cake tin. This is the most crucial part because a New York cheesecake bakes in a water bath. So we need to mark out our aluminum foil, which as you see there, I've kind of made sure that the shortest portion is in the center and then covered up slowly and surely with two other layers of aluminum foil that are basically marked in X angle to really make sure that the halfway mark of my cake tin is well covered with aluminum foil and this is done once we have multiple layers folded over. We also want to make sure that we really tightly crimp the aluminum foil around the edge of the cake tin and do not let it overhang. This is because the cheesecake does rise slightly. It usually rises between a quarter and half an inch. And as it rises, if we had any aluminum foil that was kind of sticking over the inside of the cake, it would then indent our cheesecake, ruining its perfect uh, appearance. As you can see, I've made sure that the lowest point in the aluminum foil is above the halfway mark. And because we've got four layers, we've really made sure that even if a little bit of boiling water gets th into the aluminum foil, there are sufficient layers inside that it should not affect our nice crispy crust that we want and that perfect uh, cheesecake inside. Next we place our finely crushed graham crackers or digestive biscuits, sugar and the pinch of salt in a bowl and we stir. Unfortunately I didn't have another little ceramic ramekin so I put all of the salt for the entire cake in that. Then we add the melted butter. Now we want this mixture to hold together firmly but not be too buttery. So this exact amount is perfect for the graham crackers to soak up the butter but still be firm when we tightly press them into our cake. So we need this to be really tightly pressed into the base of our cake tin so that it holds firmly when we slice it eventually there is going to be a lot of cheesecake on top. So I usually just uh, kind of smooth out with the back of a spoon and then I don't really have any presses so I just used a flat bottomed glass to really tightly pack in the uh, base here and then I went around and just made sure that the edges were really nice and even. We want this to be as even as possible. Uh, you'll definitely notice this when you cut into the cake. So just a little bit of pressing down with the back of a spoon. You don't need anything fancy here, trust me. Just being methodical. Take your time when making your cheesecake and do not rush any stage. We bake the base for 10 minutes or until lightly golden, then turn your oven down to 160 degrees Celsius or 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Measuring out the cake tin to go into the roasting tray for later. This is much easier done before we've got anything else in that cake tin. We can set that aside and we can get to making our cheese portion of this cheesecake. You will be doing a lot of mixing here. We are putting the cream cheese and the mascarpone 
which I swear adds the perfect creaminess to this cake. And I highly recommend not subbing it out the first time you make this recipe because you will notice the texture is just so much nicer than a regular cheesecake that only uses cream cheese. We need to beat the cream cheese in the mascarpone for four minutes. Now this, even at room temperature, you will notice that they are still quite stiff and beating for four minutes allows them to fully incorporate, but more importantly, to ensure that absolutely no lumps remain in these cheeses. This will then help us when we add every other ingredient to this cheesecake and will ensure that it is well incorporated. You do not want to speed this up, no matter how sore your arm gets. At about two minutes in, I was really, really wanting it to be over. Um, and I mix a lot with a hand mixer. So you probably would want a stand mix for this, but you can absolutely do this, I believe in you if you have a hand mixer and if you're doing this by hand without any electric mixer i want to give you a medal uh, definitely let me know because this is quite hard work but it is the hardest part of the process because once you start adding in those other ingredients it will loosen up significantly and you might notice that the texture is much smoother and creamier than when we initially began now cheesecake has a really long history when you start searching but the version or what we attribute to the modern day new york cheesecake can be linked to arnold rubin who in 1929 he was the owner of the legendary tough restaurant at 49th and broadway in new york city he claimed his family developed the first cheesecake in the uh, new york version he needs to add in our sugar we do this in portions because we want the sugar to fully dissolve into the cream cheese mixture and we want to fully incorporate it so after each addition you probably want to mix for around 30 to 45 seconds which is exactly what i did but it is much more sped up here now back to new york cheesecake before arnold rubin created it the cheesecakes were often referred to New York cheesecake because cheesecake wasn't really considered this until it was in New York. So New Yorkers have obviously always been very passionate about this dish. After we incorporate all of the sugar, we add in the salt and the vanilla extract. This is only a small flavor addition but it adds to what is the core flavor in our cheesecake. I know you can probably, if you make this a few times, you could absolutely add lemon zest or a little bit of lemon juice or something else that you absolutely love. But a traditional cheesecake should always be tried first, just the plain way with vanilla extract. You will not regret it. Next, we add in our eggs one at a time. These must be room temperature, like all the other ingredients, because this will help uh, keep the mixture nice and smooth and will also ensure that it's all incorporated nice and evenly. You'll notice that I'm cracking the eggs into a bowl and then adding them to the mixture. Speaking from experience, there is nothing worse than having most of your cake perfectly made and then cracking an egg into your mixture and the egg is gone off. So this helps ensure that your egg is perfect and that your mixture remains perfect as well by adding it into a little bowl and then adding it to your mixture definitely a top tip for all cakes that you make once we have fully incorporated all our eggs i usually look for a line of egg yolk just a little line of yellow that tells me that deep in that mixture there is an egg that has fully broken up and is now fully incorporated the eggs used here are just four medium eggs and they are what help create that perfect texture in our cheesecake that we know and love once we've fully incorporated them, we add our final ingredient. Yay, we're almost done with all this mixing. And that is the whipping cream. 
when you first start mixing this you might notice this the mixture is really loose and i feel like it looks like almost completely liquid like it looks like a form of liquid cream but as you beat it more you'll notice bubbles start to appear and this means that the cream is thickening and that the mixture is fully incorporating together we mix this for about four minutes just to ensure that it is fully fully combined and that absolutely nothing is lumpy in the texture of this cheesecake we want it smooth and we want to maintain that perfect texture that we've built so hard um, with all of our mixing as we mix longer you'll notice that it tends to rise like usually whipped cream does and that it expands thanks to the amount of air that has gone into the mixture the size of my cake tin that i used for this cheesecake is 20 centimeters or an eight inch cake tin now when i pour my cheesecake filling into that cake tin you will notice that I pour it and there is a little bit of cheesecake filling remaining in the bowl. There's just too much for this size cake tin. I imagine if you have a cake tin that's about 10 inches, it would be perfect for this cheesecake. Or alternately, you can definitely um, make some more smaller ones in ramekins. And if you don't have time to bake the rest of the cheesecake filling in smaller cheesecakes and you need to refrigerate, definitely cover and then definitely make sure that filling comes to room temperature before you bake it. Another thing you might notice when I pour my cheesecake filling into my cake tin is how close to the edge I fill my cake tin. And that's due to how little the cheesecake actually rises. Whilst baking, it rises between a quarter and half an inch. I recommend leaving at least a quarter of an inch. I don't even think I left that this time and I was panicking a little bit whilst it was baking, but it did not overflow. We place that cheesecake in the roasting tin inside the oven, slide it in there, but leave a little bit of an overhang outside the door so that we can carefully and slowly pour the hot water into the roasting tray. And then we slide it in and we pretty much don't touch the oven. This is it, fully baked at an hour and a half and perfectly golden. You see it has risen there. We let it sit for an hour in the oven with the door ajar. Then we refrigerate it for at least four hours. When we uh, are ready to basically stir our cheesecake, we carefully and methodically remove the aluminum foil. There is a very high chance that a little bit of water has got into the aluminum foil and this is why we put so many layers on it. You just have to be careful and slow when removing it so that no water that is potentially in there can get into the cake tin. I do not line my cake tin with grease proof paper because of how uh, liquidy the cheesecake filling is and as you see here half of the cheesecake is just loose and the cake tin comes away easily and the rest you can just remove carefully with a skewer. If you are not serving the cheesecake immediately after you have taken the cake tin off definitely keep this refrigerated and it will keep in the fridge covered in a container for like three or four days easily and keep its perfect flavor when it's time to cut into your cake cut with a nice clean warm knife so that it goes through the cheese really easily and then when you pull the knife away to avoid any marks being left on your cheesecake you want to clean your knife we're just gonna serve this bibber guys i swear every time i cut the first slice of anything for these videos it always goes horribly awry and my first slice i didn't cut right and so it fell apart therefore the second cut now before we cut into that perfect cheesecake we want to clean our knife which i think i will show there you go 
with some paper like paper towel or you could even actually there was a couple occasions I just cleaned it quickly and that warmed it up with some hot water and we can serve this with berry coolers or some lemon curd but we want to serve it whilst still chilled friends I hope you really do enjoy this it is probably one of the best things to bake and will likely be something people remember for a long time <laughs>